TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Welcome to the podcast. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. Our guest right now is Avi Meza. His uncle is the legendary Jackie Mason of blessed memory who just passed away at the age of 93, much beloved by many for his great sense of humor. Avi, we appreciate you being here with us. Thank you very much for having me. So tell us about, I, mean, I know Jackie for many years, and what I find shocking is is that I left a message Thursday. Actually, I corresponded with Jill, his wife, his manager, about booking him to do a radio commercial, and I got a response on Thursday. So everything seemed honky-dory, and then all the, I was shocked to hear this after Shabbos today. So do we know anything yeah. what happened? No, it was also, uh, honestly, I, I knew of nothing. I, I, all of a sudden, I, after I come back from shul and my, my phone's lit, lit up, you know, I just, I just turn on my phone and I'm getting texts from everybody, condolences. Uh, and, uh, I even wasn't sure what they was, what was going on. But then, uh, then, you know, I checked some family messages and I found out he, uh, just had some respiratory issues and, um, and he was admitted to the hospital, and uh, you know, and that was—I I understand was peaceful. He went peacefully, so uh, that's uh, certainly a um, you know a comforting thought. Now he was certainly a comedic genius. He told me on numerous times that he got um, Smith of Moshe Feinstein of blessed memory. And you know, I met I, I met him because uh, he was promoting the book of of his brother dealing with the Holocaust. Right, my uncle Rabbi Bernard Mazer, great, uh, great author and Torah scholar, um, and um, he uh, he had many books, and uh, so that was that was several that was many years back then. Um, yeah, he he was funny. Uh, you know, my father was a, his oldest brother. He was a male, a famous male, and uh, a great story was once he um, he did a bris for somebody. He wrote for page six in the New York Post. That was the father of the baby. So that guy went to Jackie Mason and says, I don't know, your brother was actually just a male for my son. And then so Jackie goes, yeah, my brother cuts him up one way, I cut him up another. <laughs> <laughs> he had a wonderful sense of humor. He was uh, very, very funny. Uh, what yeah. can you tell us on a, on a personal level? Uh, let's say you related with Jackie. How how we related when he was off camera, or off people watching him? Yeah. So the, interestingly, you know, some entertainers are very, uh, you know, they have stage presence and they're different in, in on a personal level. And I would say uh, he was consistent. <laughs> he was the same. If you saw him on stage. He got off the stage. He also the same. Uh, same personality, the same kibitzing, the same jokes. It was like you could have a conversation with him. It was it was material for another show. That's that's how funny he was. <laughs> and uh, no. uh, I, a great story I had is the first time I, I took my wife. I met my wife. Uh, I took her for a date. I took her for a date. We were dating. We, you know, we were dating first, and then uh, I took her to see one of his shows on Broadway. Um, I forgot which one. He had a few. And I bring her backstage. The first thing he says to her is, New, what are you doing for putts like my nephew? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I, can just, I can just hear him saying that. I can just hear him exactly saying like that. And it didn't stop. It's like, he goes, so what do you do for a living? That was his thing. What do you do for a living? She goes, I'm a doctor. He goes, what, a 12-year-old doctor? <laughs> <laughs> He goes, what do you specialize? My wife's the internist. What do you specialize? She goes, no, I'm an intern. She goes, that's all you could do? <laughs> it just it kept going. It kept going. It kept going. But that's the way he was. And it was, it was, uh, uh, he, 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 was uh, he used to come to family simplicity. He stopped coming because everybody would just, would just uh, migrate around him, you know? So he would come more towards the end. You'd see him at the end. You know, he'd come in. 
Now, you're musical. Now, you have an orchestra. You yeah. have a great voice. Uh, I remember Jackie also loved Jewish music. He loved chazanas. So whenever I did it, I wish yeah. I taped it. It'd be in between commercial breaks. He always used to sing chazanas to me. Yes, he did. In the middle of the shows, he would do uh, Yirot song for Rosh Chodesh. Remember? He'd go, Yirot, and then he turned to the crowd, Jews only. <laughs> that was <his> <laughs> He was, yeah, he was, uh, he was, do you remember he did, uh, I don't know, our good friend Shannon Taylor, he did a uh, bracha at the, at, the, at the chuppah. It was a gorgeous tea rendition. He was a cancer. He's, uh, he gets billed as a rabbi, but really he was a cancer. He was a big chazan, and that was really where he had high holiday shtelas as a cancer. And he had a very nice voice. He certainly did, but he, but you know, people said to me it's not true. But he told me on numerous occasions he had smicha or nezer of Moshe Feinstein. Right. So I personally can't confirm or verify that, but uh, you know that's what he said. So <laughs> no, so because uh, he was very proud of it. But you know, at, yeah. at one point he decided that he's he's better. He'd, he'd rather be a comedian than being a rabbi. So <laughs> yeah, right. I, th I think he chose the right. His famous line was, you know, somebody, in, because my father's a rabbi and my uncle, uh, Bernie, uh, Bernie Dove Meza, the author, who's uh, all show was, and I have an uncle, Gabe, who's, who's a retired rabbi, but he said somebody in the family had to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we know, do we have, do you have an idea when the funeral arrangements are going to be for, for your uncle? No, I just. Uh, they're still uh, getting that, and I have not been given the details yet. But uh, I'm sure they'll be. Uh, uh, you'll you'll find out. Anyway, Avi Mason, want to thank you for being here with us and giving us a glimpse yeah. of your uncle, the great Jackie Mason of blessed memory. And um, we, we we're going to hear a lot more from you because you're a great. You're not only you're an attorney, but you're a great musician. You have a wonderful orchestra, and I yes. look forward we're to getting you know, ready for a big wedding tomorrow. We have a big wedding in Muncie with uh, Uri Davidi, very famous uh, is, uh, Israeli Hasidic singer, is going to be leading our band tomorrow. So we're very, very happy. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we look, we look forward to that. Um, um, final question, again, from our emails. Would you characterize Jack, because he was very religious at one point, did he turn more yeah. religious? Did he stay mm -hmm. off the beaten track? How was he over the course of time? So, uh, first of all, he knew everything about orthodoxy. Did he, he didn't practice everything, but his heart was always to uh, be Jewish-minded, respect for religion, and always Israel. Israel meant a lot to him. And, uh, you know, he was a big uh, supporter of conservative policies in Israel. So he was, in my opinion, of, he wasn't the most religious person at the, uh, for the last years, but he was uh, certainly promoting everything that would preserve Jewish heritage and Jewish faith and Jewish practice. So that's what I could say about this. Avi, thank you, and we hope to have you back again and talk about some of the work that you're doing. Right, thank you. It. Thank you for having me. It's always an honor to be on your show. Thank, thank you. you. Avi Mays on the passing of his uncle, the late, great Jackie Mason of Blessed Memory. Privilege to have with us once again, Jackie Mason, one of the, what can I call you, the world's funniest Jew? It's up to you. If, you. if you're not sure, you don't have to call me that. But if you know anybody funnier, I don't know his, his name. Do you know anybody funnier? I can't think of anybody funnier. So, so. Then that's good enough. They so then you're the funny. That means I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> Were you always funny growing up? I was Did always funny. I never had any trouble being funny. The comedy came always natural to me because I always said to myself that it's an easier way to make a living than being a rabbi. I was raised to become a rabbi, and I became a rabbi. Well, aren't you from a long generation of and rabbis? I come from a generation of many hundreds of years of rabbis. If you look back my family tree, all the way back when Columbus discovered America, <laughs> if he was related to me, he would have been a rabbi. Because my father didn't allow you to even live on the site unless you were a rabbi. Whoever came into the house, if he wasn't a rabbi, you started studying to become a rabbi. Well, you actually studied to become a rabbi. You didn't have to be a person. You could be a cat, a dog, a horse. Everybody had to become a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> but you became a rabbi. You went to yeshiva I actually became in the Lower East Side. rabbi, yes. 
You had Rabbi Moshe Feinstein of Blessed right, Memory gave right. you ordination. Right. Did you crack up during the ordination? Or? I didn't crack anybody up because and that wasn't my purpose in life at that time. Nobody was paying me to tell jokes as a rabbi. I only tell jokes if I get paid for them. I have to make a living from it, otherwise I'm very serious. But you ever consider being, you know, we had the singing rabbi, do you ever think of becoming the funny rabbi and being in the pulpit and cracking jokes? A singing rabbi to me is a moron. Nobody comes to hear a rabbi sing, there's other people make a living from it. <laughs> <laughs> the kid that doesn't become a rabbi, what right do you have to suddenly become a singer? You're only putting a guy out of work. <laughs> that means you got nothing to say, you have to start singing all of a sudden. So the guy must have been stupid, otherwise he'd never be a singing rabbi. But rabbis tell jokes from the pulpit, right? There aren't there many, they there's the funniest rabbi yeah. contest. It's wonderful to tell jokes, they want to hear jokes, but uh, they don't expect you to start singing, they don't expect you to dance either. They don't expect you to start flying or climbing the walls. Yeah, that's your job, to, to tell jokes, be entertaining and deliver messages. Right. So, so what happened? So here you got ordination. What made you decide to say, I'm not going to be a practicing rabbi, I want to be a comic? What happened? Did a light bulb go off? I saw the difference in the salary. It didn't take long to figure that out. <laughs> you know, a rabbi could live 25,000 sermons for the same price that you get those six minutes on television. You have to go through a year's work with delivering sermons before you, before you make five minutes. I'm Jackie Mason. You're probably saying to yourself, how did he wind up here? He's got no place to go. I thought he was a star. I was a star until I got this job. You know what my job here is? My job here is to talk about Zeb Brenner. Now you're saying to yourself, you got nothing better to talk about than this? The truth is I do. But Zeb Brenner said to me, I'm on television. People are watching me. But everybody knows that people are, are excited about me. They know that I have a great show. They know everybody loves me. But nobody cares to advertise on it because they don't know that people are watching it. Who's going to tell them? Somebody has to help out. The United Jewish Appeal is an important cause, but it's nothing compared to this, because the United Jewish Appeal makes a fortune. That better can't make a living. You know why? Nobody has the price. You know why they don't? Because they don't know people are watching. I'm watching the show, but I found out I'm the only one. Why am I the only one watching? Because nobody has the price. Why don't you have the price? Help this man out if he can't make a living. For free information about advertising on Talkline's television programs, please call 212-769-1925. That's 212-769-1925. Thanks for listening. For continuous Jewish programs, hawklinenetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms or jewishpodcast.org. Thanks for listening to the talklinenetwork.com. Talkline Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community.